Behind me is one of the most instantly recognisable football grounds in the world. As imposing and dramatic a stage as exists for the beautiful game anywhere on the planet. Why do you recognise as the best stadium in Italy? It's like, you know, Wembley, Maracana, I don't know, Santiago Bernabeu, Camp Nou. At once, a football stadium and an architectural icon. The Giuseppe Miazza Stadium, or San Siro, is a landmark of its city with a storied past and an uncertain future. Lo stadio è la città di Milano. Non solo un simbolo della città, ma in quello stadio c'è una parte della storia di questa città. With two tenant clubs in Inter and Milan who seem to want out almost whatever the cost, San Siro could soon end up empty, left as a decaying monument to former glories, or even torn down entirely, nothing more than a memory. San Siro is something historical, so if you leave San Siro, it's like you leave a part of the history of these clubs. But neither San Siro's beloved status nor its cultural importance is enough to keep it safe from the pressures of modern football. The hope is that with the new stadium, they can regain competitivity on international level. If the stadium is demolished, it won't be the first famous football ground to meet that fate. Wembley is also a historic football ground, but they had to tear it down. I'm all in favour of romanticism and I'm all in favour of preserving history, but at the end of the day, it's a football stadium. It's not a museum. But the Miazza, known also as La Scala del Calcio, after the city's world-famous Scala Theatre, is a Milan landmark that many locals hope to see saved. When you destroy a stadium like this, you don't destroy just cemento, concrete, but you destroy the soul of the people that were inside. So how did this one football ground become something so much more? And how has the pressure to compete left its existence hanging in the balance? San Siro is proof of football's power to transcend sport and create cultural icons. So what to make of the fact that its time may soon be up? The Stadio San Siro was built uh, around 1926 and uh, it was uh, for uh, around 30,000 people. And uh, after the Second World War, they decided to make uh, it bigger, adding a new ring. So they make uh, an incredible project that uh, is this project with the ramps that go up. The second stage of the stadium is uh, the born of two very important football clubs uh, all over the world. After, in the uh, 1990s, there was uh, the World Cup in Italy, and so they decided to enlarge the stadium to get up to 80,000 people, and uh, also to cover all the, sta all, all the stadium, you know, because before the second ring uh, was uh, not covered. And uh, so there was the, the third transformation that you can see, that now is marked a very important uh, and huge landmark, this red, huge beam that you can see from the, the, the highway. As Carlo pointed out to me, Italia 90 was also the occasion of the birth or renovation of other famous grounds around Italy, like the San Nicola in Bari or the Luigi Ferraris in Genoa. But none match the San Siro for scale or status. This is a ground that's seen and hosted it all, a temple that's home to two of the most famous, most successful clubs in Europe. The triumphs these two teams have celebrated here, the legacy of Italia 90 and the notoriety of the Milan derby are all part of this stadium's lore. Which is why San Siro is up there with Wembley, the Maracanã, the Bombonera, the Monumental, grounds of global importance. All the players, uh, even the most, uh, the most famous, uh, when they, they play here, they feel, they feel the vibes, they feel the, the pressure of the stadium, they feel the atmosphere. So even if they play in Champions League, uh, Premier League, uh, Bundesliga, whatever, they are always, always impressed from San Siro. I think it's one of those things that you really have to experience live yourself. There is a magical feeling in the air when you come to see it. The lights, the, you know, the, the, this is a huge square and this, this, this thing, this giant colossus has landed like a spaceship in the middle of it. I tifosi dell'Inter, del Milan, hanno un legame fortissimo e quindi ha un valore enorme. Con il terzo anello lo stadio Bomboniera aiuta tantissimo a vincere le partite 
e quando il pubblico, adesso stabilmente sui 70-75 mila persone, quando c'è tutto il pubblico è chiaro che la squadra ne trae un grande beneficio. All of which begs the question, what problems could the clubs possibly have with San Siro? Well, there are minor issues like the inhospitable state of the toilets in the Curva Nord and Curva Sud, and major ones like the limits the stadium imposes on the two clubs' incomes. È uno stadio che in questi anni ha tante pecche perché è invecchiato, è uno stadio fantastico, ma contemporaneamente anche qui intorno non ci sono tutti quei benefit che normalmente uno stadio moderno dovrebbe avere. But adding a few extra amenities ought to be manageable. The Santiago Bernabeu is an old concrete giant as well, but renovation works are turning it into one of the most modern arenas in the world. The difference is the Bernabeu belongs to Real Madrid. The, the San Siro is owned by the, uh, the city administration of Milan that rents to Inter Milan and AC Milan. And that's what Inter and AC claim to why the stadium is old. Because they cannot exploit at the, at the maximum the benefit that corporate hospitality can give in a financial capital like Milan. And this is the crux of Milan and Inter's complaints, the reasons these two iconic clubs are so unhappy in their famous home. If they had a ground of their own, they could make a whole lot more money than they do at the moment. Regardless of how iconic San Siro might be, it's hurting the club's finances. And for that reason, they want out. When you own the stadium, you can also manage what you see around, like uh, even the selling of um, uh, T-shirts, uh, you know, uh, all, uh, all the food and everything. Uh, if you have uh, your own stadium, you can, uh, you can have revenues also from those like uh, services that now are extra from the San Siro. Quindi non è che vogliono lasciare San Siro, semplicemente vogliono fare in modo di avere più soldi. According to their line of argument, the question has become an existential one. Either the clubs get their own ground, together, or one each, or the European competition leaves them behind for good. Other clubs around Europe have set inspiring examples. Arsenal, who left the home of football for the Emirates. Local rivals Tottenham, who raised White Hart Lane for their glitzy new ground, or Atletico Madrid, who left the Vicente Calderón for the Wanda Metropolitano. Now Milan and Inter too want their own modern arena. Look at Spurs' new stadium. That's, a mold, that's, that's, a, that's an event arena all year round. They have everything from concerts to NFL games. That's what football clubs are competing with today. They are in the entertainment business, whether they like it or not. That's the reality. And they have to adapt to that reality in order to be able to secure revenue all year round and not just when there's a match going on. This refrain that uh, big clubs have their own stadium uh, convinced AC Milan fans to, to want uh, to, to have a new stadium. In, in Italian terms, the two clubs are already competitive because two years ago Inter Milan won the league, last, last year AC Milan won the league. The problem is the Premier League is breaking away on the financials. And then you got giants like PSG, like Real Madrid, Bayern Munich, Barcelona. So the, the hope is that with the new stadium, they can regain competitivity on international level. It is uncommon for Italian clubs to be the proprietors of their own stadiums, which some contend is hurting the game here in general. Nessuna squadra italiana ha più vinto la Champions League. L'ultima è stata l'Inter nel 2010. Nessuna squadra italiana ha neanche, fatto, ha neanche vinto un'Europa League. E continuiamo a perdere in competitività. Eh? E ci siamo brillati gli occhi perché abbiamo vinto l'Europeo, ma non basta. Il sistema calcio del nostro paese quindi è barocco. Ma c'è una notable exception. Two hours down the road in Turin, the third of Italy's grand old football clubs has taken a step away from the municipal renting model seen in Milan. Historically, the Italian football has been run by Juventus, Inter Milan and AC Milan. They made the 80% of the fans across the peninsula. Of course, it's a sort of jealousness, envy that Milan has gotten towards Turin, that Juventus got its own stadium.
Juve's ownership model, a 99-year lease from the city of Turin on the land where the stadium is built, is one that Milan and Inter hoped to emulate at San Siro in order to demolish and replace the Miazza. It also happens to be the model by which West Ham are granted tenancy of the London Stadium for which they left behind 100 years of history at the Bullin ground. But not everyone in Milan is happy to consent to the covert privatisation and subsequent destruction of one of the city's most iconic public buildings. And so there is an active campaign to defend San Siro from the plans to tear it down. Noi abbiamo mobilitato i cittadini contro questa ipotesi, difendendo uno stadio che è di proprietà nostra, dei cittadini milanesi. Il tutto dello stadio è una cosa unica, la forma dello stadio, unica nel mondo, riconoscibile, identificabile con Milano, ed è uno stadio funzionante. The local conservationists who hope to save San Siro are above all unwilling to see a symbol of their city sacrificed on the altar of a footballing system that they believe is fundamentally flawed. One that puts the interests of investors and sponsors ahead of the interests of the communities to whom the clubs belong. The idea that Inter and Milan have <laughs> is with a, a, a smaller stadium yeah. with much more seats for not for the public right. but for the, the, the sponsor, yeah. the corporate, corporate. Yes. and yes. consequently the main reason of this stadium is to be popular, yeah. is to be the place where the people stay together for football, for concerts, for religion, for opera, whatever the blood it is. And in this way, this is going to be lost. Tutta questa storia è priva di senso, pubblico, di senso pubblico. Non c'è un interesse pubblico in questo, ci sono solo interessi privati. If they want to do a stadium in a certain way, they have to do it and they can do it, but not with, uh, with a public <laughs> stadium and in this way, you see. And the stadium isn't the first or last piece of the fabric of their city that San Siro's defenders see as under threat. Their endeavours to defend Milan's heritage go beyond the battle for this ground. We are losing pieces in this town. We are losing theatres, we are losing clubs, we are losing old restaurants, and we are losing identity. Too much uh, McDonald's or... Uh, uh, like in every other town in Europe, we don't want to see a town with no identity, with no history. And the football stadium is part of this strong battle. It's testament to the cultural importance of the stadium that San Siro's future has become a matter of nationwide debate on whether to grant the Miazza the status of a listed building. If only it were that easy. It can be listed in the heritage uh, for uh, all the building, or only for the first, only for the second ring. Uh, so it's like uh, when you make a, a, a restoration of a church. You know? Sometimes you have a painting that belongs from the 15th centuries, but the church originally was in the 13th centuries, which is the limit on which you come back to the history. So it depends on how they list it. Not only is that process complicated by the various stages of the stadium's development, but by bureaucracy and political inertia. La sensazione è che la politica italiana non abbia mai deciso per paura, per paura di calpestare qualcosa o, o quantomeno di fare degli errori. The funny thing is that Milan is renowned in Italy for being European decision maker and here on the stadium because of the feeling of the stadium which it involves the population is like stuck and so it's complicated, yeah. That's an Italian job. Let me say, I love my, my, my country, but it's an Italian job. Meanwhile, if San Siro proves immovable, the clubs have floated the idea of leaving Milan altogether and heading to an outlying suburb in search of cheaper, less complicated land to build on. I love this stadium, I love San Siro, I would like to stay here forever and die in this stadium uh, watching uh, AC Milan. But if I have to put on the table the priorities, 
the, the future of AC Milan and uh, Inter as well, or whatever, but for me, the future of AC Milan is the priority. AC Milan needs a stadium and the stadium will be done. With Inter, without Inter, in Milan or not Milan. They, the two clubs won't wait much longer. And I think that the Milan mayor has understood that. And he's saying that, look, if we, don't, if we scare them away, we will stand here with an empty colossus. What prevails is a stalemate between the city, which must protect its heritage but also balance its books, and the two clubs, who need a home but also need to compete in the unsentimental, money-driven world of modern football. If, if the two clubs had the financial power to do it, as Juventus did, they would, would have done. What they, they are trying is to get, to get the best to Having a new stadium, even though they, they, haven't, they haven't got the financial powers. Se le squadre di calcio vogliono avere, vogliono stare a San Siro, bene. Se non vogliono stare a San Siro, si costruiscano lo stadio a Sesto, a San Donato, a Porto di Mare, in altre zone dove ci sono possibilità. E questo va bene, ma se lo facciano con i loro soldi, non con i soldi dei milanesi. What's at stake in this long-running standoff is the future of a cultural and sporting icon, in danger of disappearing like many other grounds before it, a victim of the irresistible financial forces at play in the modern game. And if it can happen at San Siro, it can happen anywhere. Se tu abbatti questo, abbatti tutto. Il problema è che Milano è una città che tende a distruggere molto della sua storia. Io ho la terribile sensazione che possono distruggere quindi anche San Siro. Dipendesse da me, non lo farei mai. Lo stadio è la città di Milano, non solo un simbolo della città, ma in quello stadio c'è una parte della storia di questa città. È come se uno volesse distruggere la scala perché è vecchia. La scala non è il teatro più bello del mondo. In Italia ci sono dei teatri più belli, San Carlo di Napoli, o il Teatro Massimo di Palermo, ma è una storia, è un luogo, è un luogo di riferimento, un luogo della città, così è San Siro.